So pro football focuses Sam Monson. Uh, to him, pretty apparent what the Browns need to do to improve dramatically. Miles Garrett is individually playing as well as any defensive lineman in the NFL. We're talking like this year, everybody's focused on Nick Bosa and Micah Parsons and maybe Chris Jones. And I think Garrett is playing as well as any of those guys, if not better. But the situation around him on that defensive line is so bad that it doesn't matter. And we track these things, these plays of like individual pass rush wins that don't get to become pressure because the ball's gone, right? Before he can, before he can affect the quarterback. Garrett has led the NFL in those for the last couple of years. And I think that is a product of nobody alongside him is winning. So the, no, the number of plays or the number of wins that he has that don't affect the quarterback is disproportionately high. So simply improving the situation inside of him immediately makes his performance more effective because all of a sudden maybe 20 of those plays where he wins actually do become pressure because there's somebody three yards closer to the quarterback inside him than there is now and Jeff I, that kind of puts some numbers to what we saw and he's exactly right if you get the line better around Miles Garrett Miles Garrett becomes in that same conversation with Bosa and, and those other guys that are defensive player of the year uh, candidates every year. Look, there's a lot of opportunities where Miles Garrett, even though he doesn't get home, the quarterback, you know, breaks the pocket, steps up in the pocket, avoids Miles' path. That is supposed to be creating cleanup opportunities for other players. We're obviously not getting them. Uh, Taven Bryant, your second leading sackler, sacker on the season with three. Uh, you saw more activity from J.D. J.D. Bean Clowney in 21, 22. You saw nothing close to that. Miles excelled with Olivier Vernon back in the day. That was a situation in a marriage that certainly worked together. You just, you know, and the thing is, is it's really easy to game plan where you're not scared about anybody else on that defensive line. And you see teams commit two, three. Heck, if you got to hold them, hold them because you want to know what. What are the odds, you know, Miles Garrett's then going to come back the next rep and sack our quarterback because we don't really have any fear of anybody else. It's a difficult spot to be in. And, you know, I think the Browns, by you know, as they did with Joe Woods, as they're doing with a lot of other things is, you know, you're going and evaluating yourself after three years about what you do well and what you don't do well. Um, and I think that's why they went to a guy like Jim Schwartz, who has had more than one successful stop in the NFL as far as being a defense coordinator starting in Tennessee. Uh, becoming the head coach of the Detroit Lions, having another strong stint in Buffalo, then another strong stint with the Philadelphia Eagles. I think they put themselves in a position where I think, in my opinion, Jim Schwartz is probably going to get a lot of pull here as far as you know what he wants, what he likes. And the Browns say, hey, we can do this. You know, Jim, what do you think? Is this something you can work with? Um, because I think they realize that it, this has been an issue for them. They really have not been able to get this position right. And this isn't just necessarily – the Andrew Barry era, the defensive tackle position for the Cleveland Browns has been issues since I've been covering in the fall of 2017. Um, but it does feel sometimes like you got Miles out there and he's basically, you know, one-legged man in a you know butt kicking contest.